Hi, this is George Mills, uh, developer of V1 Driver. I'm going to show you uh, the differences between the different bogey maps or bogey views. Um, it works the same on uh, Android as it does on um, uh, the iPhone, and I'm doing this on the iPhone. So uh, what I'm going to do is play back the demo that's in the app um, three times, which is actually uh, a pretty good recording to show what it's doing. Uh, keep in mind, the way this demo was originally set up is I got two radar guns at my house, one pointing down the road at me, um, a KA gun, and a K gun pointing away, f away from me up the road. And both guns are at the house in the sa at the same point, and I'll be passing the house about halfway through the course, and they'll be on my right, and I'll be, I don't know... Uh, uh, 50 yards away from it uh, as I'm passing it. Um, so I'm going to start up the demo. And can't start it. And let's jump ahead a little bit. So let's see. So this is showing that the KA is directly ahead and it's weak. If it was strong, it would be over on the left at the red line, at the red bar. Um, right now, it's showing the weakest strength that it can. So it's moving to the left because I'm getting closer to it. So as it comes across the screen, that means it's closer. Uh, the way the V1 works, it will also tend to move towards the center. It's just an artifact of the way the V1 works. Um, so you can get a good feeling uh, for where they are. So now you can see that I just started to come up to it, and it's it's basically on the side, but you can see as it approached the side, uh, it might not have ever came, you know, actually got to the point of being side, but you could still see it started to approach. And now I'm passing it, and it's behind me, so that's why it's on the bottom half of the map. The K the K band just crossed over from from being in front to being behind, and uh, the KA is almost out of range. Uh, it should be in a second. And now it's announcing the K24, and it's also fading away uh, behind me. So anything that's on the top half is in front. Anything that's on the bottom half is behind you. Anything on the left is strong, and anything that's weak is on the right. Um, and that's the way it's always been on this map. Um, but as they get strong, they will tend to move towards the center. Uh, basically, you don't get as much resolution between front and back as the st signal strength increases. So now I'm going to show you the new polar map, which is the same idea, but a little bit more common sense uh, the way it's set up. Um, so let me switch it to polar. And we'll run the demo again. I'll jump the demo ahead a little bit. So now it's a little bit more common sense that the bogey is directly in front. So now it's showing you north, right at the top of the map. Um, as you get closer, it's going to get closer to the red line there. And as you pass it, as the angle of its approach to you changes, it's going to come around this elliptical curve in an arc around you. Um, so you can just watch. It'll start to come around. It'll also come towards the center because you're getting closer to it as well. Uh, the K just popped in there as well. So you can see it just came around. And now I'm getting very close to it, so now it's going to get close to me on the bogey map. Uh, so this is actually a little bit more common sense of the way it's. Now it's showing right on uh, the, uh, very close to the midpoint there. Uh, so now it, the V1 would be showing behind because it's on the bottom half of the curve. Now the K just crossed over from front to back as well. Um, I've got a lock out there that's showing... Uh, that that uh, range is locked out on this uh, the database. And the red is showing you the frequency of the K. That bar is just for K-band. Um, so now you can see the, the K is getting weak, and it's, getting, it's going behind me. And it's going to go, I think it's going to go a little bit more to the left. So it came in at the top, and it went out the bottom just like it should. And it came around, and it came, came in close to the red line, but not quite. Um, and so you can get a real nice feel for the, uh, for the bogeys where they are. Keep in mind, this is designed for a couple bogeys at a time. 
when you're really under real threats. You're not going to have nine bogeys on the screen when you're really worried. You're near a mall or something, and you're not going to be speeding. When you're on the highway or something like that, or on some rural road, which is where you're going to get nailed, you're only going to have one or two bogeys on there, and they're not going to likely be in the exact same spot. So the bogey map works when it's in a real threat situation. Uh, it's interesting to look at when there's a lot of bogeys at the mall, but it's not where they're all cluttered on top of each other. It's not all that useful, uh, but it's not, it's not needed in that situation either. Usually savvy's kicking in when you're at the mall. So now let's switch it over to the list view and bogey list. And we'll run the demo again. Jump it ahead a little bit. I'm just tapping on the chart there. And now you can kind of see how you're getting a lot less information here. All you know is he's ahead and has a certain strength. But I'm approaching that bogey. Um, it's um, once in a while you'll see the little lever on the in front of the KA there. So he just went green. Uh, it's because it, you know it's just a little bit of noise. Uh, but when it's up, that means it's approaching you. Now the strength is increasing, so you could interpret that this this bogey is approaching you. Uh, and then it's in front. But when you get a couple bogeys on there, it's a little tricky to keep track of uh, what's going on and what's been happening. Uh, but with the bogey map, you get a much better feel for what's going on. Um, you can see where it bounced around there, uh, around the midpoint. But again, the threshold for it being around the center is very tight on the V1. So it could be very close to uh, side, and uh, you won't know it until it's, it's really close to side. Um, so you can see how much less information you're really getting uh, looking at it from this view. If you like this view and you're used to it and you know how the V1 behaves, you can perfectly well use this uh, view. Um, I also try to show um, that relative strength of the signal. I'm going to back it up a little bit um, on this view so you get a little bit of that information. That's what this bright white line is way in the right. It's showing you uh, how far forward or how far back that arrow is. You can see, um, let me back it up again a little bit. Um, so right now you can see the, uh, the KA is right around the midpoint, and it's show but it's still showing behind. They're both very close to the midpoint, uh, but, they're, but the V1 is saying it's rear. Uh, now they're more c the top one is much clearly, it's, you can see the little white line is away from the midpoint, um, that it's much further away from the, uh, the center. Um, so I try to show you a little bit of that information, same information in this view as well. Um, but the bogey map shows it much better. Um, so it's something you got to get used to, uh, to, uh, get the feel for it. Uh, but just, I'm just trying to explain, uh, the different views and you can use whatever, whatever you like. Uh, so that's it.